Set 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones, King Jaehaerys I Targaryen, grandson of Aegon the Conqueror, the legendary dragon rider, who first conquered the Seven Kingdoms, and created the Targaryen dynasty is left without an heir. A council forms to help choose his successor between his granddaughter Rhaenys, and his grandson Viserys. The patriarchal members choose Viserys, and it's his rule where our story really begins. Years later, King Viserys unable to produce a son, and faces the same dilemma that put him in power. When a council forms to name a successor between his brother, Demon, and his young daughter, Ranra, King Viserys tells them that, he will not be made to choose between my brother and my daughter. It's the kind of indecisive declaration perfect for an impending civil war. Of course, we're just getting started. Princess Ranra seems to be our new Daenerys. She loves riding dragons, is ambitious for her age, and doesn't want to spend her life pumping out children. Daenerys wanted to break the wheel, and Ranra wants to create a new world order. Her uncle Demon, however, is our first main antagonist. As commander of the City Watch, he spends his days avoiding council meetings and sneaking in to sit on the Iron Throne while the king is away. Viserys' brother Demon is shown to be ambitious and ruthless. One night, Demon abuses his power and sends his golden cape knights to murder random people in the street. Beginning tonight, King's Landing will learn to fear the color gold. His men engage in beheadings, genital mutilations, and they sexually assault women. He considers the people he attacked criminals, but it seems like he just committed a massacre of innocents. Viserys is angry with his behavior, as is Otto Hightower, the hand of the king. Otto disagrees with his methods of keeping the peace, suggesting that Demon might be better off back in the Vale with his neglected wife. Demon proceeds to call her a bronze bitch and openly insults her to the entire council by offering her to any man who wants her. It's just the first episode, but House of the Dragon clearly wants us to think that Demon is a monster of a man. Earlier, he presented Ranra with a Valyrian steel necklace. Let's just say his intentions did not come with the kind of vibe that an uncle is supposed to have with his niece. Incest may be a Targaryen norm, but it must say something that Demon is the only one entertaining the idea at the moment. His name is one letter away from Demon and he's certainly acting like it. Viserys's pregnant wife, Queen Emma, goes into labor the following morning. It's not going well. She had many failed pregnancies before, but the king is desperate to produce a male heir. Forced to choose between his queen and the baby, Viserys chooses his heir and the queen is sliced open. At her funeral, it is revealed that the baby only lived for a few hours. During this tragedy, which is truly one of the most harrowing and bloody scenes HBO has ever shown its viewers. House of Dragon intercuts the terror of Queen Emma's murder with one in carnage at a jousting tournament. In this one episode alone, almost every main character has committed an atrocious act of violence. Later, Otto Hightower once again brings up the topic of succession. The small council soon decides that the succession needs to be set ASAP, so they meet to debate whether Demon is a fitting leader. Some argue that Demon might murder Viserys to assume the rule sooner than later. Then Otto suggests that the king's firstborn child become the named heir, instead. The day may be closer than we think, because King Viserys has some weird, putrid wound on his back that seems beyond healing. Viserys summons his brother before the Iron Throne to ask him directly if he said the heir thing. We must all mourn in our own way, your grace. Viserys unleashes upon him, saying that he's made excuses for him forever. Demon shoots back that he's never once been asked to be Hand of the King, and that Otto doesn't protect the King. He doesn't protect you, I would. From what? Yourself. Then the King sends his brother back to the Vale, because he's no longer the heir. As Demon leaves, Viserys cuts his hand on his chair, and it bleeds. In a metaphorical sense, the king does not know from where the next cut, the next betrayal could come. It's an ominous metaphor for what happens to those who rise to power. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to build a pointy chair made of swords. Then the king meets with Ranra to talk about continuing the Targaryen reign. He apologizes for being so focused on having a son, then tells her that he now believes she was made to wear the crown. Then he shares with her the secret that Targaryen rulers have been passing down ever since, King Aegon I Targaryen had a very unsettling vision of the end of the world. It is to begin with a terrible winter, gusting out of the distant north. Aegon saw absolute darkness riding on those winds, and whatever dwells within will destroy the world of the living. When this great winter comes, Rhaenyra, all of Westeros must stand against it. And if the world of men is to survive, a Targaryen must be seated on the Iron Throne. 
a king or queen, strong enough to unite the realm against the cold and the dark. Egon called his dream the song of ice and fire. Good luck, kid. So Alison dresses her friend for a very public pledging of loyalty, and Ranra stands before the Iron Throne while all of the lords swear their fealty. Meanwhile, Demon brings Mazaria, to meet a dragon I believe is Caraxes, and they go for a little ride. 